Back west, you don't see too many of these. Lakes, I mean. Natural or man-made. Any kind, really. We neglected the dams or pumped all the water out a long time ago. Owens, Isabella, and the San Luis drained the aquifers of everything they had. Just a lot of mud and dust now. It's a different feeling watching the sun come up over the water. It takes from getting used to. But if you're here long enough, it starts to seem normal. That's what a ranger's life is now, looking east. I'm surprised to see you here. Folks with your kind of reputation, I expect to see them cooking in the sand with some 44 slugs to keep them company. If the rangers haven't caught up to you yet, they will. Myself excluded, of course. The only thing I catch up on now is chair time. Folks around here call me the chief, but Hanlon's just fine. The rangers run themselves pretty well, but I try to lend a hand. Mostly administrative work, helping coordinate intel on the radio. That and keeping an eye on the fires growing across the water. Legion fires, they burn high wherever the legion goes. Caesar's a hard man to figure out, but he always wants you to know when more troops are at your front door. Shoot. The best of the best, worst of the worst. He came out of NCR, one of the followers of the apocalypse. Like a lot of the followers, he went out in the wilderness with a partner to try to help those who needed help. Not much different from how the rangers used to be, except with books and medicine instead of guns. Out to the Grand Canyon, he met a missionary from Utah, a man by the name of Joshua Graham. Graham helped translate for the followers and the tribes. All three of them got nabbed by the Blackfoots down there, back when they were still at war with every other tribe in the Southwest. Somewhere along the way, he realized he needed to educate the Blackfoots or they were gonna get wiped out with the rest of the tribe. Showed them how to use guns, how to make explosives. Once he taught the Blackfoots a thing or two, they needed him. And he no longer needed the followers, NCR, or anyone else. He decided he could remake the tribes of the Southwest whether they wanted it or not. He became Caesar, and Joshua Graham became his legate, his right hand. And that's where Graham stayed until Hoover Dam. Losing the dam was the worst defeat the Legion ever suffered. Graham had been with Caesar since the beginning, but he had to set an example. The Praetorians covered Graham in pitch, lit him on fire, and down into the Grand Canyon he went. It's not that clear cut. You have to understand, Graham was the toughest son of a gun anyone around these parts had ever seen. Before Hoover, we had five kill reports on Graham from Rangers and first recon sharpshooters who tried to take him out. Some folks think he's still alive, call him the burned man. Yes and no. The Blackfoots don't exist anymore just like any other tribe that gets swallowed by the Legion. Caesar takes the tribal out of the tribe, scrapes and burns off tattoos, breaks up families, forces mixed breeding, so all the old loyalties die away. The only tribe in the Legion is the Legion. Caesar is the chief, father, and God, all rolled into one. Shoot. It's no secret we've had better campaigns. Holding this whole length of river isn't easy. We're stretched thin and the long 15 just keeps getting longer. Slow to get supplies, slower to get reinforcements. NCR Senate has got funds tied up at the bone yard. And President Kimball ordered our most experienced rangers to chase ghosts down at Baja. Senate elections Local representatives don't want to push any more funding to the Mojave campaign because it's unpopular. 
Most of the folks around the boneyard haven't been to New Vegas and probably never will. All they know is that their money gets sucked away to this desert and their brothers, sisters, sons, and daughters die here. It's complicated. It goes way back. I told President Kimball that we need more rangers here. He accepted that, but took the most experienced ones and sent them south. Patrol rangers are good men and women, but we're about to fight a war. You've seen it yourself. Some of them don't even have proper service rifles or armor. Our heavy infantry, power armor units, they're back in NCR territory protecting the interests of Brahmin barons against small time raiders. Brahmin barons only have one vote at the ballot box, but they have a lot of money to throw around. Shoot. Not too long ago, they took Nelson and Searchlight. They got some camps on the eastern shore of the Colorado and the monstrosity on the hill across the lake. That's for Caesar. Some folks don't believe he's here yet, but you can tell. He's the eye of the storm. It all roils and spins around him. You don't have to see the man to see the effect he has. Nelson was barely set up. We had a big stretch of unprotected land between Forlorn Hope and Searchlight, and Nelson was the solution. A decanus named Dead Sea took the place and caused a lot of damage. Searchlight was worse. One of Caesar's frumentari must have found something in there. Flooded the whole camp with radiation. Shoot. I could tell you a lot if you had the time, but at my age, I'm not sure which of us would get tired first. What do you want to know? Oh, well, I guess it must be coming up on 40 years or so. Back before Elise was cheap, anyway. It was a heck of a lot harder then. Weren't as many of us to go around, but I think it was a lot easier to tell the good guys from the band. Well, there's what we're supposed to be doing and what we're actually doing. There's a big gap between those two things, about as wide as that lake out there. To protect against all forms of tyranny, as simple as that. 30, 40 years ago, the wasteland was full of despots, slavers, raiders, tough-talking hoodlums with gangs who liked to kick around towns. Back then, the NCR military was still young, couldn't cover much ground. It took groups like ours to tip the balance back to the good guys. Sitting on the shore of Lake Mead, looking east, listening to a radio, trying to not get too many people killed. I'm too old to be slapping leather, but I had hoped for something else. More than this, anyway. There's a lot of answers to that question, but it started with the Ranger Unification Treaty. We weren't always the only show in town. Nevada had its own posse, the Desert Rangers. They fought Caesar even farther east out in Arizona. Years back, we met with the Desert Rangers at Mojave Outpost and agreed to help them against Caesar if they would join the NCR. Suppose it depends on what you think's good. Most folks want to hear about Hoover Dam and Boulder City, but it's a long story. If you want some tall tales about hunting down slavers or busting up gangs, talk to one of the younger Rangers. Kind of a long one, but off right. About 20, 25 years ago, a group of NCR settlers pushed way south into Baja. I guess it doesn't seem so far now if you look at a map, but back then they were out of ways. They built this little shanty town around a well in the middle of nowhere. Called it Rattletail. Word got back to one of our stations that raiders had been attacking the place. I went out with six rangers. We must have been on the trail for a week before we got to Rattletail. We lost one woman to night stalkers and another almost died of dehydration. When we reached the place, it's six shacks set up around an old well. 
There's over two dozen bodies lying in the dunes way outside of town and five men with 308 rifles crouched behind sandbags. And these bodies, these people out in the sand, they aren't raiders, aren't even heavily armed. They're just people who were trying to get to the only well in 50 miles. I didn't have to talk to the men to see that they did not care one bit. They had planted an NCR flag over the well. They would not budge until every last one of them was laid out dead and cold. So I walked up and told them there was a group of raiders coming, 100 strong. I made up some cockamamie name for them and everything. The men looked at each other, looked at us, and asked me what we were going to do about it. I told them we would take them back into NCR territory because we'd already lost 10 Rangers on the way out. 10 Rangers, five men with 308 rifles. Well, that was enough for them. They packed up what they could and we took them back north. Last I heard, they settled somewhere in Anza Borrego. Raised big horners, had some tough times, but it worked out okay for them. So there you go, that's my one bit of good. In big battles, Caesar deploys his legionaries in waves. Recruits up front, prime soldiers behind the recruits, old guard bringing up the rear. Opponents wear themselves out dealing with the first two waves if they survive that long. When the veterans step up, there's not much fight left. Caesar can adapt though, and when required, he can run any mix of legionaries as skirmishers and still retain order in the ranks. Joshua Graham, Caesar's old legate, he wasn't so flexible. When the Legion attacked Hoover Dam, General Oliver ordered his troopers back to the middle ground just after first contact. Graham pushed all of the Legionaries onto the dam, filling the east side with recruits up front and veterans in the back, by the book. But once they were in, they were stuck there. Oliver's troopers were entrenched and wouldn't give up foot. That's when we ordered the Rangers and the first recon sharpshooters to start picking off veteran Legion officers from a high ridge west of the dam. That only lasted about a minute before Graham ordered the back ranks to push through to the front and rush the ridge. Caused total chaos among the younger Legionaries. Oliver's troopers fell back to the side walkways and stayed out of the veterans' way. By the time the veterans got to the ridge, we were already in Boulder City. They followed us down there, but we were out before they realized what was happening. We had packed the old city with C4 and dynamite. Crude, but it did the job. Those who didn't die in the blast were in no position to mount a defense. The ones left on the dam didn't know what to do. The troopers routed them. Graham pulled the remaining legionaries back, but the battle was over. He went south, back to the Grand Canyon, back to Caesar. And that was the last we saw or heard from Joshua Graham. Shoot. Adios. You've come back to see the chief. Nice of you to humor the radio tender. What can I do for you? Mojave outposts sent word through the stations. The rangers coming up from Baja moved through Deglo a week ago. Some of the patrol rangers have reported that Oliver's power armor heavy troopers are starting to reinforce the front lines. I wish they got here a bit earlier, but that's a Senate for you. The Baja rangers can do more advanced night scouting and sharpshooting to assist the troopers. Ranger combat helmets are old pre-war gear. They have built-in low-light optics. Makes a big difference. They have the best equipment the NCR can get its hands on. Power armor salvaged from our war with the Brotherhood. Tech strip out the joint servos so you don't need special training to wear it. It feels like you're carrying a Brahmin on your back, but it can take a heck of a lot of punishment. Shoot. Word is that the Legion's old-timers have shown up. 
Caesar's veterans from the Red Oki Centuria and what was the Painted Rock tribe. They're the best of the best and the baddest of the bad. Short of a Centurion or Praetorian, they don't come any tougher. You come across a pack of them, weigh your options carefully. Take a regular legionary and age him 10 years. Whatever they lose to age, they make up for with experience. Life expectancy isn't long in the legion. You live 10 years in Caesar's army, you're forced to be reckoned with. There's no real equivalent to them in the NCR. Centurions are battle-born elite officers who earn their rank with blood and sweat. They wear special outfits, too pieced together from the armor of all their defeated enemies. Good commanders, tough opponents. Caesar's elite guard. They travel with him wherever he goes. A bit of insurance in case any of his guests get funny ideas. They aren't the toughest legionaries, but they're the most devoted to Caesar. They believe in everything the legion stands for. Shoot. Interesting that she would wrangle someone else into sorting out the problem. But I suppose you're in the right place. A lot of intel comes through here. I don't know Technical Sergeant Reyes, but coordinating intel can be messy sometimes. Things get mixed up, people get confused. Heck, I get confused, and I've been doing this for a long time now. What he or she sees as a problem might be standard operating procedure. That's not to say Reyes is wrong for being concerned, but it's easy for the sand to get in your eyes out here. Well, the logical thing to do is to check with the patrol rangers and comm officers. Don't be too discouraged if some things don't match up. Different people see different things, and sometimes the meaning gets twisted. Lost in static from person to person. It's a simple system when it works. Patrol rangers radio intel to ranger stations. Comm rangers send the intel up the station chain until it reaches Camp Golf. Then I or one of the other rangers on duty organize the data, evaluate it, and send information to camps or troopers in the field. Com rangers might have an incomplete picture of the situation. There's a lot going on out there. Intel needs to be coordinated through golf so we can verify and advise appropriately. Troopers have enough to deal with. We don't want them questioning their intel. Shoot. Hold on. If we're gonna have this conversation, let's go somewhere more private. Don't worry. Not much bite left in this old dog. We won't go quietly. The Legion can count on that. We won't First week. Sorting and manipulating intelligence is what I do. It's what Rangers are supposed to do. This job isn't all gunfighting and gulping shots of whiskey, no matter what the boys and ladies out there say. You have, have you? Misdirection. When you're pinned down, outnumbered, and two days from any help, it's just about the best friend you can have. Misdirection's what saved me all these years. It's what saved us at Hoover Dam. But it's been five years now, and Caesar's right across that lake. He's closer now than he ever was before. I was a young man once. I know what it's like to want to fight for your home. But this isn't it. We're fighting on their behalf, but Mr. House and the families are stringing us up inch by inch. They'll drain us dry while we fight and die over this dam. We offered them sanctuary in NCR territory before, but they won't listen. Troopers and rangers have been dying here for more than five years while the families sit pretty behind that damn wall. People back home don't listen. 
They don't care. Senators, Brahmin barons, folks who are just trying to make it from day to day. It's been so many years that people forget about it. Conscription brings in fresh troops to die here every month, like it's routine. And even if we hold this dam, what then? Are we going to send the NCR's men and women to die here for another five years? Ten? Patrol the whole length of the Colorado for hundreds of miles? Holding this dam, it'll be the death of us. Creating fear and instability among the troopers without causing harm. It's the only thing I could think of to shake things up. It took some people getting killed to realize I'd gone too far. I had to stop. It's never gonna end, this fight with Caesar. People back home don't know what these young men and women are in for. The Legion is the worst enemy we've ever faced. But we can't stop Caesar here. Not without getting a lot of good people killed. More than anyone cares to count up. But even if we do stop him, I don't see how we're ever going to be able to pull out. First thing that comes to mind is to turn me in. But that might not be the best play, all things considered. Even if your heart's in the right place, I reckon it might do a lot more harm than good. Oliver can't stand that Rangers got credit for victory at Hoover. Whatever I recommend, he does the opposite. I said I wanted us on the ridge. He put them right on the western part of the dam itself. We don't have enough firepower to hold that spot. If the troopers fall back, and they will, the rangers will advance to cover Oliver's retreat. We lose the dam. Oliver and the center are ruined. Rangers are volunteers. Every man and woman who signs up is willing to die for the NCR, myself included. A lot of this is my fault. It's only right that I stand with them. Maybe 50 rangers will die on that dam. We lose over a thousand troopers every year. Being here is crazy. Getting out's the only sane thing to do. Fair enough. You want to do this the right way, go get one of the rangers. Don't worry, I'm not going to run out on you. All you need is one ranger protecting the monorail. That shot came from the chief's office. Rangers, this is the Chief. I know I can ramble on sometimes, but I need you to listen close for the next minute or so. I've got some bad news. I messed up. Made a mistake. I thought I could help us get out of here, but it didn't work out. Rangers get injured all the time. It's part of the job. But if you lose a few fingers, get a bad break, that's it. You step down. We rely on each other too much to let our infirmities become a liability. The ranger knows when it's time. Only I didn't. Somewhere along the way, something broke inside me. I couldn't find us a way out of this desert. I wrestled with it, and it took me down a dark road. I wish I could explain it to you. The old chief's finally at a loss for words. Send me all the legion you can. I'll be waiting for him. <laughs>